Hello everyone, today we are discussing a very important topic about the venous ulcer. First of all, we have to, do, to detect what the different etiology and causes of ulcers. The main three types of ulcer are venous, arterial, and neuropathic. Other causes like pressure ulcer, trauma, infection, bioderma gangrenosum, vasculitis, skin cancer, and steroid use. The duration of the ulcer less than 6 weeks mean that it's acute ulcer, more than 6 weeks mean that it's chronic ulcer. First of all, we have to detect what the etiology of the venous ulcers. In the slides, it's detected valve dysfunction. Actually, it is increasing of ambulatory venous pressure. And we have different causes and etiology for this increasing intravenous ambulatory pressure. First of all, deep venous system, when you have all deep venous thrombosis and recanalization, after one year, it will start what's called post-peripatic syndrome. That means we have fibrosis and stenosis at the deep venous system that increase the intravenous ambulatory pressure. Second is the incompetence. Incompetence of the valve in the deep venous system would cause increase the ambulatory venous pressure and is predisposing for ulcer. Third, for the superficial system, we have reflux. Either it is primary or secondary. We have refluxing saphenofemoral junction, refluxing saphenobibitious junction, and uh, refluxing perforators, especially if it's related to the ulcers. So, all these conditions are the main etiology for the venous ulcer. After increasing ambulatory venous pressure, we have stasis, we have extravasation of the red blood cells, which have hemosiderin. Hemosiderin can cause pigmentation and later on engulfment of the hemosiderin particles by macrophage will induce inflammation. Inflammation causing hyperpigmentation, lipodermatosclerosis, and fibrosis. And later on, those devitalized tissue and non healthy skin would have breaking of the epidermis and cause ulceration. Later on also, we have damage of the superficial lymphatics. Arterial ulcer. Arterial ulcer means we have a decrease in the uh, perfusion, arterial perfusion, which is important to maintain wound healing. It's commonly present at the dorsum of foot at the pressure point with shoes at the distal toes Related to peripheral vascular disease, large vessels, or small vascular disease, diabetes, or other etiology of the vasculitis, or even trauma with them, low arterial blood perfusion. It's important to assess ABI for the patient, to assess the possibility of the healing, and if we have an ischemic ulcer, that means ischemic edge, bad creation tissue floor. We have to refer to vascular surgeon. He would, uh, for example, um, uh, assess the patient uh, and uh, request uh, for more investigation and later on uh, revascularization by either um, angioplasty or bypass. Neuropathic ulcer, um, this patient has um, he is a diabetic patient. Commonly, it's a diabetic patient um, and he has a um, change in the three elements um, sensory, motor, and autonomic. Since the patient is liable to have trauma and uh, he doesn't feel that uh, he has this trauma. So, uh, this is the first point, which uh, is predisposing to breaking of the superficial epidermis. Second is motor neuropathy, that means that we have a different tone of the muscle forming foot, that means uh, we have a uh, small muscle wasting and we have a uh, new pressure point which is liable for alteration. The third point is the autonomic. In diabetic patients, we have a decrease in sweating and liable for more fissures and breaking of the epidermis and ulceration. So how you can manage this condition? Neuropathic ulcer could start with it. In the first, we have to control diabetes and you have to do careful foot care and to assess a soft tissue infection. 
and even hard or bone infection in case of stomach intestine and correct all these conditions. And then we have to remove the agent, hyperkeratotic agent, calcium, and making offloading. So the key rule for management of neurobiotic ulcer is control diabetes and offloading. For the venous, we have to do compression and the surgical deployment in the first emollient for the surrounding eczema, elevating them, and you have to treat the etiology. Either the etiology is an obstruction or refluxin. For the HGL, you have to address the vascular factors of um, atherosclerosis and referring to vascular surgeon to assess by more investigation and um, more imaging and considering later on for angioplasty and bypass or bypass but here we have contraindications using compression so let's um, start in our presentation venous ulcers and we are focusing on the American Venus Forum guidelines clinical evaluation we recommend data for all patients with a suspected leg ulcer fitting the definition of the venous leg ulcer clinical evaluation for evidence of chronic venous disease be performed wound documentation we recommend the serial venous leg ulcer wound measurement and documentation wound culture we suggest against routine culture of venous leg ulcer and only to obtain wound culture specimen when clinical evidence of infection is present wound biopsy we recommend wound biopsy for leg ulcer that don't improve with the standard wound and compression therapy after 4 to 6 weeks of treatment and for all ulcer with atypical features lab evaluation we suggest a lab evaluation for thrombophilia for patients with history of recurrent venous thrombosis and chronic recurrent venous leg ulcers RCL testing. We recommend the arterial bulk examination and measurement of the ankle brachial index on all patients with venous leg ulcers. Wound cleaners. We suggest that venous leg ulcer be cleaned initially and that each dressing change with neutral, non irritant, non toxic solution be performed with minimum of chemicals or mechanical trauma. Now we will discuss some, some type of dressing. It's not our lecture today to emphasize and focus on the type of uh, uh, dressing, but uh, we have uh, to take short notes about the uh, different type. In the first term, we have um, a type of dressing that causes mechanical effect like gauze, flying gauze, and monofilament fiber. We have um, a dressing that causes autolytic effect like foams, hydrogel, hydrocolloid, alginate, honey, cellulose transparent film and uh, amorphous gel and we have uh, some type of dressings uh, that form enzymatic effect uh, like collagenase, papina and honey we have a type of dressing that decreases moisture so it's uh, uh, suitable for heavy exudate uh, like gauze, alkynate, foam, hydrofiber, gelling fiber, protease uh, and negative pressure we have uh, some dressing that causes uh, semi effect of the maintaining moisture like hydrofiber, hydrocolloid, saline gauze, and wound fillers. And we have a um, different type of dressing that increases moisture and it's suitable for dry wound like in impregnated gauze, hydrogel, hydrocolloid, transparent film, and island. We have a different type of dressing that has an antimicrobial effect for infection management like silver and BHMB polyhexamethylene bifenide iodine and honey which has more preventive effect than treating effect and we have dressing to control bad odor like antimicrobial silver and BHMB charcoal and uh, cyclodextrin and honey so dressing goes uh, uses in mechanical deprivement uh, and to control moderate to heavy exudate 
algae nitin like in honey autolytic deprivement heavy oxidative and infection management collagen it has a promote tissue generation and epithelialization and can be used for heavy oxidative this is the brand and the trade name of different type of dressing you can check for it Forms it has um, used in uh, and role in autolytic deprivement, uh, used in heavy to moderate exudate, uh, infection management, uh, maintain moist environment, uh, thermal insulation, and extended pump protection. Hydrofiber, autolytic deprivement, uh, moderate to the heavy exudate, uh, and has uh, infection management. Hypertonic, uh, autolytic deprivement. Uh, for SCAR, necrotic tissue, all exudate levels, and maintain moisture. Saline goes mechanical deprivement, wet to dry, light to moderate exudate. Hydrogel, autolytic deprivement, light to moderate exudate, infection management, maintain moisture. Hydrocolloid used for light to moderate exudate, maintain moisture, thermal insulation, impermeable to water and bacteria. And reduce infection rate. Transparent films for autolytic deprivement, light oxidative, and maintain moisture. Collagenase for enzymatic deprivement. Silver for infection management. Honey for depriving the critic tissue infection management. Iodine for infection management. BHMB for infection management. And charcoal for odor management. Venus duplex ultrasound. Now we are returning to uh, American Venus Forum guidelines for Venus ulcer management. We recommend the comprehensive Venus duplex ultrasound examination of lower limb extremity in all patients with suspected Venus leg ulcer. For further Venus imaging like CTV, computed tomograph venograph, and MRV, magnetic resonance venograph, and the contrast venograph. And IVAS, it can be used if additional advanced venous diagnosis is required or for operative planning before open or endovenous intervention. So, the fertile venous imaging team is to detect more information about the advanced venous diagnosis and preoperative planning. Venous disease classifications, we recommend to choose. Uh, one of those different types of classifications. We have C classifications and revised venous clinical severity score, and uh, we have uh, also venous disease specific quality of life assessments. So, in this presentation, I will discuss uh, C classification and revised venous clinical severity score. C classifications uh, C for clinical, E for etiology. A for anatomy and P for pathophysiology. This is the old classification. Zero for non visible or palpable sign of venous disease. C1 for tranchectasia or reticular veins. C2 for varicose veins. C3 for edema. C4A for pigmentation or eczema. C4B for lipodermatosclerosis or atrophy blanching. C5 for healed venous ulcer. C6 for active venous ulcer. S symptomatic, A asymptomatic. E for etiology, C congenital, B primary, S secondary, post thrombotic, A non venous cause identified. A for anatomical, S superficial veins, B for perforators, D for deep veins, A no venous location identified. And B for pathophysiology, R for reflux. O for obstruction, RO for reflux and obstruction, in no venous pathophysiology identifiable. C1 tangectasia or reciprocal veins, 2 varicose veins, 3 edema, 4 A pigmentation or eczema, 4 B lipodermatosclerosis or atrophy blanching, C5 healed venous ulcer, C6 active venous ulcer. The new SIEB classifications is the revision at 2020. It's the same condition of the previous classification, but we have difference in C2R for recurrent varicose veins, 
T6 R4 current active venous ulcers and more information about C4. C4A pigmentation or eczema, C4B lipodermatous sclerosis or atrophy blanche, C46 corona telepathica. Revised venous clinical severity scoring. It depends on different point of um, uh, symptoms. The first one is pain or discomfort. We have one for mild, or occasional pain that not restrict regular daily activity. Two, it is daily pain or discomfort that interfere but not prevent regular daily activity. Three, daily pain or discomfort that limit and prevent regular daily activity. Presence of varicosis, definition of varicose pains dilated, unencated, tortured subcutaneous veins more than 3 mm. It is few scattered style 1. It is confined to calf or thigh is type 2. It is confined to calf and thigh is type 3. Venous edema. Venous edema, uh, if it is limited to foot and ankle, is type 1. If it is extended above the ankle but below the knee, is type 2. If it is extended above the knee, is type 3. And skin pigmentation, inflammation, induation. If it is limited to peri malleable area, it's type 1, diffuse over lower third of cuff type 2, wide distribution above lower third of cuff type 3. Number of the active ulcer 0 for 0 score, 1 for 1 score, 2 for 2 score, 3 or more 3 for 3 score. Active ulcer duration. Not dedicated for zero score, less than three months, one more than three, less than one year, two more than one year, three. Active ulcer size. Not dedicated for zero, diameter less than two centimeter for one score, diameter two to six centimeter for two score, and diameter more than six centimeter for three scores. Use of the compression therapy. Not used for zero score. 1. Intermediate use of stocking for 1 score. 2. Uh, that means uh, uh, we are stocking uh, most days. 3. He is fully compliant. So the revised venous clinical severity lay on pain and discomfort, varicosis, venous edema, skin pigmentation, inflammation, induration, and the number of the active ulcer, diameter of the active ulcer, duration of the active ulcer, and the compliance of using compression therapy. On deprivement, we recommend that venous cell leg ulcer received through deprivement and their initial evaluation to remove obvious necrotic tissue, excessive bacterial burden, and the cell burden of the cells. Surgical deprivement, we recommend that surgical deprivement be performed for venous leg ulcer with slough, non viable tissue, or escar. Hydrosurgical deprivement. We suggest hydrosurgical deprivement as an alternative to standard surgical deprivement of the venous leg ulcer. American Venus Forum emphasized that one deprivation is important to remove the necrotic tissue and excess bacterial burden, and it recommends strongly the surgical deprivement. But other type of deprivement is suggestion. What well, the meaning of the hydrosurgical deprivement? Hydrosurgical deprivement is a system with a razor thin saline jet to optimize surgical deprivement. System enable a surgeon to precise, select, excise, and evacuate non viable tissue. So it's the system with fine razor, and we have um, saline um, making it like a suction, and it can uh, make a more precise, more precise excision and remove the necrotic tissue without affecting the healthy tissue. So, uh, this is the system called the Versa Jet System. This is the trade name for the uh, hydrosurgical deprivement. Ultrasonic deprivement, we suggest against ultrasonic deprivement over surgical deprivement in the treatment of the venous leg ulcer. Again, American Venus Forum endorses surgical deprivement. Enzymatic deprivement, we don't suggest enzymatic deprivement over surgical deprivement, endorsement of the surgical deprivement. Biological deprivement, we suggest that larva therapy for venous leg ulcer 
can be used as alternative to surgical deprivement. So, different type of deprivement, but the first type and the best type is surgical deprivement. Management of the limb cellulitis. We recommend that cellulitis, that means inflammation and infection of the skin and subcutaneous tissue surrounding the venous leg ulcer, to be treated with the systemic gram positive antibiotic. This is short notes about ultrasonic deprivement. Uh, using ultrasonic waves to make a deprivement. Um, this is a, um, a study formed by an uh, Australian hospital and the Universal Hospital. And um, the conclusion that it is safe, effective, it makes selective deprivement, it has a bad antibacterial activity, and it would stimulate wound uh, healing and the sustainable ongoing treatment modality. But uh, it needs uh, further investigation and the randomized control trial. And American Venus Forum endorsed surgical deprivement over ultrasonic deprivement. Wound colonization and bacterial biofilm. We suggest against systemic antimicrobial treatment for the venous leg ulcer without clinical evidence of the infection. Systemic antibiotic. We recommend that venous leg ulcer with clinical evidence of infection to be treated with systemic antibiotics guided by sensitivity performed on wound culture. Topical antibiotic. We suggest against use of topical antimicrobial agent for treatment of infected venous leg ulcer. Anti-inflammatory therapy. We suggest against use of anti-inflammatory therapy for treatment of venous leg ulcers. Topical dressing selection. We suggest applying topical dressing that will manage venous leg ulcer exudating and maintain moisture or wound bed. Indication of the adjuvant therapy. We recommend adjuvant bone therapy option for venous leg ulcer that fail to demonstrate improvement after minimum of 4 to 6 weeks of standard wound therapy. We have a different type of adjuvant therapy. We have spirit thickness skin graft. We suggest against spirit thickness skin graft as a primary therapy in treatment of venous leg ulcer. It's not primary therapy, it's adjuvant. Cellular therapy, we suggest use of cultured allogenic bilayer skin replacement to increase the chance for healing in patients who have failed to show sign of healing after standard therapy for 4 to 6 weeks. So, the adjuvant therapy that means failure of uh, uh, improvement or wound healing again after 4 to 6 weeks. We have a spirit taken skin graft, we have the cellular therapy using cultured allogenic bilayer skin replacement. Negative pressure, we suggest against routine primary use of negative pressure wound therapy for venous leg ulcer. Electrical stimulation, we suggest against routine electrical stimulation therapy for venous leg ulcer. Ultrasound therapy, we suggest against routine ultrasound therapy for venous leg ulcer. But now we are discussing the very important uh, points of the management of venous ulcer is compression. And it will be the final point in our first presentation or our first half of the management venous ulcer presentation. Compression ulcer healing. Compression therapy is based on the simple concept of applying an external pressure to lamp, which is able to improve venous hemodynamics, control eczema, reduce inflammatory mediators, improve microcirculation, improve arterial inflow, and improve lymphatic drainage. In patients with venous leg ulcer, we recommend compression therapy over no compression therapy to increase venous leg ulcer healing rates. American Venous Forum, Level Evidence A1. In patients with healed venous ulcer, we suggest compression therapy to decrease the risk of ulcer recurrence. Multi component compression bandage. We suggest the use of multi-component compression bandage over single component bandage for treatment of venous leg ulcer, compression and arterial insufficiency. In patients with venous leg ulcer and underlying arterial disease, we don't suggest compression bandage or stocking if the ankle bracket index is 0.5 or less or obsolete ankle pressure is less than 60 millimercury.
Degree of compression in patient with the venous leg ulcer. Stronger compression pressure more than 40 millimercury is better over low compression pressure less than 20 millimercury is recommended to increase healing. Elastic or inelastic. Inelastic material or short stretch multi component bandage are both comfortable at rest and more effective in improved venous hemodynamics in a standing position and during muscle exercise compared with the elastic bandage or compression stocking. Rule of elastic stocking. So he prefer inelastic than elastic one. Using of elastic stocking, elastic skeleton exerting pressure more than 40 millimercury may be used in an ulcer treatment, especially in a small ulcer, and by caregiver without adequate expertise to apply a good bandage. Rule of intermittent pneumatic compression. Intermittent pneumatic compression can be used as suggestion in if we don't have a um, compression option. So, in patients with venous leg ulcer, we suggest using intermittent pneumatic compression when other compression options are not available or can be used. When possible, we suggest using IPC in addition to standard compression. Thank you very much for your attention. And this is the end of the first session uh, or first half presentation of the uh, measurement of um, venous leg ulcer. Thank you.